shocking new video of children performing a disturbing skit at the Muslim American Society in Philadelphia. Children calling for horrific acts, including uh, beheadings and torture. M.A.S. Philadelphia, that's the Muslim American Society of Philadelphia, they posted this video to their Facebook page. They've since removed it, and their national organization has issued an apology saying the Philly chapter rented the space out to some, quote, group. But one individual, I'll tell you, who's been totally silent through this whole controversy is someone who's not usually that silent, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, an outspoken advocate for the Muslim American Society, a very controversial group. We have contacted her office. Nothing. Joining me right now is American Islamic Forum for Democracy, Dr. Zudi Jasser. Good to see you, Dr. Jasser. And uh, are you surprised by that, Ilhan Omar? You know, she's really vocal on some stuff, but, you know, when this happens, uh, crickets. Well, it's going to be crickets, Trish, because that's her constituency. Yeah, that's where she uh, got her start. Uh, that's basically where she was uh, uh, trained and operated through. Uh, you know, the Muslim American Society had a school near her district called Tiza, T-I-Z-A, the Tariq Ibn Ziyad Academy, that, by the way, who shut it down? The ACLU shut it down because it was uh, uh, preventing, forcing kids rather to pray, forcing kids to participate in religious Salafi jihadi activities. So uh, if the ACLU gets a school to shut down because it's violating separation of church and state or mosque and state, that tells you how radical the MAS is. And the MAS has been proven Trish, by the Chicago Tribune in the 2004, they did a story called The Secret of Muslim Brotherhood Across the United States, and they said 35 chapters operate using the same go-by, the same constitutional rules as the Muslim Brotherhood of Egypt, and it was exposed in a four-part series that is still on the Chicago Tribune site, and the MAS has never had a response to it. Okay, so a couple things going on. I want to get back to Ilhan Omar and what kind of school or society she may have been associated with. But let's go first to the MAS having chapters all over the country. And you've said, Zudi, that you have concerns that this is not an isolated incident, what we saw, because it's pretty bad. Well, what's pretty bad, absolutely, and, and, and the reason it was exposed is because you heard kids talking about chopping off heads and, and doing things that are beyond grotesque and barbaric. But before and after that, in that thing that was practiced, it was rehearsed, it was scripted, mm -hmm. the parents watched it, the parents posted the video and, and cheered on in that school. So this is not a one-off in that it's not just one skit that went bad. They talked about renting the space. This is the modus operandi of the MAS. They, they, they share spaces with mosques, they share spaces with schools that they co-fund and they co-mingle uh, uh, with. That's how they operate. So that is sort of a, a, a dismissal that doesn't uh, uh, yeah. Pass the smell test, if you will. And the ideology, what they want to do is say, well, the militant part is what's the problem. No, the nonviolent Islamism, the, the supremacism of Islamism. President Macron yesterday in France said that we have a problem with the Muslim population in France, which is separatist and doesn't share our ideas. And he called that political Islam. This is what I've been fighting in our organization, as reformists have been fighting, and Americans need to use this as a teaching moment to say, it's not just those one kid, that one group of kids. It is a lot of the schools that are teaching kids to not believe in this country and to have ideas that are supremacist. Somehow you're not allowed to say that, right? You're not allowed to criticize Ilhan Omar. You're not allowed to criticize the Islamic faith. But what you say, sir, is very important, and I know you're a very religious man that, that practices Islam. But what you're talking about is two different things, right? There's a politicized version of it, which doesn't like the United States and does not like Israel and teaches that kind of hate that you saw those kids um, saying. And, and then there's the actual faith. And so if you don't call it out, if the Islamic community itself, if Ilan Omar doesn't have the decency to call out that kind of junk, then what future does the Islamic community have in the United States of America? Exactly. I mean, the Philadelphia Commission, I'm sure, is going to begin the process, but we need a national commission on radical Islam. We need tough love to our Muslim community. And we Muslims, now we're in our second day of Ramadan. We're fasting, looking internally, spiritually, at how to repair ourselves. If we start to look at these issues intensely with tough love, we will realize that we can operationalize a free-thinking Islam that will help fix a lot of the radicalization problems from Iran to Saudi Arabia and elsewhere. We need to stop pushing this under the rug. 
And America needs to begin to have, as President Trump called for in his campaign, a commission on radical Islam. And many Congress men and women are, are talking to me and saying that they are ready to start doing this federally, not necessarily restricting any freedoms, but to begin to shed the light of I day from a federal and state. I know you are, Dr. Jasser. Thank you for that. Coming up, talk to Trish. Should there be military intervention in Venezuela? My take when we return.